Hey there, Darren here with Learn Film Photography, and today we are talking about scanning Polaroids. So if you've ever scanned Polaroids before, you know that there's a whole bunch of issues from the reflections that you're seeing the camera right now to how they never sit quite sit flat to a whole host of other things like dust and uh, Newton rings and other issues like getting the borders sharp. There's all kinds of troubles that make scanning Polaroids really difficult. For some reason, it feels like the front of a Polaroid is more reflective than a bathroom mirror. So we here at Learn Film Photography went into a research project where we looked for the best method of scanning Polaroids. We tried out an Epson V600, a Doxy film scanner, a DSLR scanner, and the Polaroid app to see which scanning method was gonna give us the best results. So in this video today, I'm gonna go over these four methods and we're gonna see which one gives us the best results. All right, let's get to it. So first we're gonna use the Polaroid app. Now this is the cheapest solution for scanning your Polaroid photos. You don't need anything except for this app. Simply start it up and go scroll down until you see the scanning app. And what it does is it just uses your phone's camera to automatically take the photo of the Polaroid. It crops it for you and it adjusts the tilt of your camera just to make it flat because it's nearly impossible to get a perfect perspective with it to get it perfectly flat when you're holding it in your hands. So this does a really nice job. Sometimes it takes the perspective corrections a little bit too far, but overall it's a pretty nice solution. It does a great job of isolating the Polaroid and giving you that shot. So once you get it in the right position, you're gonna see that countdown and it's gonna take the photo. Next up is the Doxy. Doxy is by far the easiest solution for scanning your Polaroids and there's no reflections. All you have to do is put in this memory card, set the adjustment so that the Polaroid is perfectly flat when it goes through the scanner. If it's at an angle, it's gonna cause some weirdness. Um, usually there's like a yellow border around it that you'll just have to crop in post. So the Doxy scanner, it's just that simple. You put the Polaroid inside of it, push it a little bit, and then it scans for you. You'll notice on the power button, there are two settings. There's green and then there's red. Green is for a low resolution scan and red is for a high resolution scan. The high resolution is about 600 DPI, which is fairly low, but it gets the job done. You can get through a whole stack of Polaroids in just minutes. Okay, so next up, let's do the Epson scanner. So the Epson V600 is one of the more expensive options on this list, but it is one of the best options for most photographers. Now the Epson V600 is a film scanner primarily and a flatbed sheet scanner so it does a little it does a little bit of everything for your office it can do up to legal size paper but one of the nice benefits of it is that it keeps the polaroids completely flat and it does a pretty good job of scanning so you can actually put multiple polaroids on there at once and it'll be able to scan them all. It'll be able to detect the positions. You might have to do some cropping, but then it, you're gonna be able to scan them all at once. The Epson also gives you a lot more adjustments over the scans compared to something like the Doxy or the Polaroid app. So with this one, you can adjust the levels, the highlights, the shadows, you can adjust the colors a little bit. You might see some Newton rings, which are just these little white rings on the scans. Um, I personally didn't see it, but it is something that I've read a lot about online. If you do start seeing Newton rings, you can go and pick up a piece of a R glass, which stands for anti-Newton ring glass, or museum glass from your local high-end frame shop. They usually have sheets of this glass in for custom framing projects, and um, you can get a custom cut of, I recommend 5 inches by 5 inches, which gives you just enough room on the edges so that if you're touching it, there's no fingerprints from or smudges. I picked one up for 20 bucks. Every frame store is going to be a little bit different, but it shouldn't be too expensive because they always have extra sheets of this stuff. Okay, so that's done. So now let's go over to the DSLR scan. So the DSLR scan is the most complicated of all of these, and it can be the most expensive if you don't have a digital camera already or a macro lens. I'm using a tripod with a horizontal arm. It's the Manfrotto 033 Pro X or something like that. And then I'm also using a video head instead of a ball head. And that's really important because a ball head, you're not gonna be able to get it perfectly flat. The video head only makes adjustments either left and right or up and down. And you can get away with the exact same thing using a standard pan and tilt head. That's gonna give you the best results. So then for the lens, I'm using the Sigma Art Macro Lens F2.8. It's the 70 millimeter version, It's not so it's not the most expensive one. It's actually the best lens at a really affordable price. And it's also just super sharp. As you can also see, I'm actually doing this underneath my desk. And the reason for that is 
Doing it under the desk cuts out a lot of reflections. It cuts out almost all the like direct light that's hitting it and just lets ambient room light on there. So the downside of this is that it does take a long time to expose the Polaroid properly. In this case, I had to use a shutter speed of eight seconds and at ISO 100 and aperture of 7.1. So I was able to get a perfectly sharp scan just by using a remote timer. I had it set on five seconds for the remote timer on my a7 III. I found that two seconds wasn't quite enough just because there is a little bit of shake that happens when you press that shutter. The main thing about scanning this way is that you really have to cut out the reflections and you have to keep the Polaroid flat. So in this case, I'm also using that museum glass or A&R glass, and that is heavy enough to keep the Polaroid perfectly flat, and it also cuts out some extra reflections. So that actually is the real saving grace that makes scanning with the DSLR possible. All right, so now let's go onto the comparisons. We are in Lightroom and here is the cell phone photos from the using the Polaroid app. So this is the first one and right off the bat you can really see that there is a strong reflection in the Polaroid. This comes from my cell phone here. Um, you can see my hand a little bit in this one and I'll go over to this one here where you can even see myself. So I essentially took a selfie inside the Polaroid so it really is more reflective <laughs> than, than my bathroom mirror. And that's something that you're gonna find, especially when using the Polaroid app. There's a few ways that you can fix these. You could use a piece of black construction paper and then cut a little hole in it for your cell phone camera. And then you can hold that above the Polaroid and scan that way. And then that's gonna really help out cut out the reflections. You could also get a piece of museum glass to cut down on some of the reflections too. And that's gonna help you get some better scans. But there's another few issues with the Polaroid scan. So one thing is the Polaroid isn't completely flat and you can kind of see that in the perspective of the image, but also that there's no real detail on the edges of the Polaroids where there is on some of the other scanning methods that we're going to see. And then the Polaroid scanning app also does try to fix perspective and sometimes it doesn't do the best job. You can really see the corrections here are not that great. So in this image here, um, I did a really quick and dirty job for cleaning up that reflection. So I was just using a brush and I went to dehaze and pulled that up to about 60. And then you can brush it in. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job of darkening the highlighted areas. Um, dehaze is perfect for this, truly. It's a really great tool. You could also go into Photoshop and do a more professional job of getting rid of those reflections. Just adding some blacks and dehaze will do most of it though. So the Polaroid scan, it's the cheapest method. It's free, basically. You just download the app and use your phone and it does a good job. It's good enough for Instagram or for sharing with friends and family. All in all, I think the Polaroid scanning app is a good option for many people who are trying to do this as cheap as possible. All right, so now let's move on to the next method, which is the Doxy scanner. So the Doxy is the second cheapest method to use. It's also the fastest because you just insert the photo and it scans through it and then you're done. So the really cool thing about the Doxy scanner is it is the best at getting this detail around the border. It's actually quite stunning, um, the amount of detail that's there. So I didn't really find that detail in any of the other scanning methods. DSLR scan, I got most of it, but not quite as good as that. But the other thing is these lines here. So in this image, it's not too bad, but if you go over to this one here, you can really see just how bad those lines are. So if I take the clarity down, yeah, it's not really fixing it. Texture down, it's still there. Uh, so it's one thing that like, it's almost impossible to fix those lines and they show up almost all the time in images that have an out of focus background like this. So dark images, yeah, does a good job. Um, there's a little bit of those lines in the highlights, but really no one's gonna notice unless they zoom in really far on that image. And this one, you know, it's fine, it's passable. I think with this one, I could actually just take down the texture with a brush or something like that, and you're gonna get rid of it just fine. But all in all, I can't really recommend the Doxy because those lines really can ruin some images. All right, so next up is the Epson scanner. Now the Epson scanner surprised me because I've, I've done a review of it. I'm gonna link it down below. First off, these borders, you can't really see much detail at all on them where you could see just a ton of it with the Doxy scanner. But then zooming in on the images, it actually does a really nice job um, at the scan. So Polaroids are not that sharp to begin with. Um, right now I'm zooming in about 300%. You know, you're getting a lot of detail out of it and you can see this dust, you can see it clearly, the dust and scratches, which is a good sign. That means it's super sharp. And like the edges here of the Polaroid 
right when it goes, when that uh, textured surface goes over the prints, you can see really sharp lines. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the Epson V600. All right, so now here is another one, and this is probably my sharpest image. So you can also see a ton of grains. If you already have one of these scanners, it's a great option to use. And also the Epson V600, it's pretty fast. I found it was one of the, it wasn't the fastest method, but it was a pretty good speed. And especially since you can put multiple Polaroids on the scanning surface at once, you might actually find that you can do it faster than with a DSLR scan, since there's very little setup that has to be done. Now, the one downside of the Epson is that you are using Epson files, and even if you use the highest DPI, you don't have as much flexibility in the editing process as you would with a DSLR scan. Now, let's go over to the DSLR scan. So here's the same image on a DSLR, and right off the bat, um, just cycling between the two, you can see there's a pretty big overall difference in the sharpness, also in the color tone too. So looking at this border here, there's a ton of detail there. There's actually kind of different detail than you can see in the doxy. In the doxy, you saw those like perfect lines. Here you see little matted texture that looks kind of like a cold pressed paper. And then if you pull up the texture, then you can get a lot of that information. All of it comes out. So you can go into Photoshop and just select the border and get all of that information out. And then the next thing is you see a lot of grains here. So I'm gonna go back to the Epson scan and we're zoomed into the same level now. And just cycling back and forth between those two, you can see there's a lot more grain in the DSLR scan than there was in the Epson scan. Now the one downside of the DSLR scan is that it is the hardest one to set up. You need to do a lot of work in order to get rid of those reflections. So I set it up underneath the desk at dusk. So if you look at my exposure settings here, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. You can see it was a 15 second exposure at f7.1 and ISO 100. So those settings, they give me the highest quality images that I can get. But having a 15 second exposure means that it's gonna take you a long time to go through a full scan. It's gonna take about as long as the Epson scanner takes to get a good scan. But then the difference is that there's a lot more setup time with the DSLR. But then in exchange for that extra work, you do get so much more detail out of the images. So I'm going to do a quick comparison here with the Epson scan. Here's the DSLR image on the right, and then this one is the Epson scan on the left. And as you can see, there's a lot more grain, there's a lot more punch, those lines are super sharp. So overall, there is a pretty massive difference when you're using a DSLR scan compared to a Polaroid. You get more of this like defined shadows more dust. <laughs> the dust is always going to be there and it's probably going to be worse on a DSLR scan than it is on the Epson and that might just be because the Epson does have that digital ice which removes some of the dust and scratches. And then you're also going to see there is a significant difference in the amount of texture that is present in the DSLR scan. Now if the DSLR scan isn't perfectly flat you're going to find that there's going to be more texture on one side than there is on the other and that's just because the focus plane is kind of tilted so that is a problem that you're gonna have to face with the dslr scan that with an epson scan it's perfectly flat no matter what so you're you're good to go once you're using a dslr scan there's so much more latitude in the images you can edit those images way more than you can an epson scan just because it's a raw file instead of a tiff file from a scanner that was built in 2007 and hasn't been updated since Digital camera technology has come a really, really long way and you're going to get a sharper image. And you don't necessarily have to use a macro. A macro is going to get you sharp results corner to corner. But if you scan from a little bit of distance, you could use something like a 35 millimeter lens or even a longer lens and get a good scan that's like that has a really flat focal plane as well. Since the Polaroid is fairly large, so if you're further back with the camera, then there's going to be more depth of field, um, especially at like f8 or even f16. All right, so that's it for the testing today. So I can't really recommend the Polaroid scanning app or the Doxy scanner. The Doxy was the better of the two, but the Doxy also just left those lines on the image that were really uncorrectable. The cell phone scanning, it can work. It can work if it's if that's all you've got and like if you need to do it, then the Polaroid scanning app will do a good enough job for sending to friends and family. But I wouldn't necessarily post it online, uh, not, in, not without some pretty significant edits or without using a black sheet to block out any reflections. So then of the Epson scanner and the DSLR, it's totally going to depend on your situation. Both of them are really good options. Um, the Epson scanner is not as good as a DSLR scan, but if you don't have a DSLR at home, then the Epson scanner might be the better way to go. Because the DSLR scanning at the end of the day, it can cost up to $3,000 to get all the equipment to do it. 
So, I mean, I can't really recommend that if you don't already have a camera. I'm using it as a Sony a7 III, but you can get very good results with nearly any digital camera. So even if you have a Canon 5D Mark II or a 5D Mark III or any of the early Nikons, even an APS-C sensor, I still think that that is gonna get you a better result than using the Epson V600. As you can see on the V600, it wasn't the sharpest. Um, the edges, it wasn't really able to capture that and the files themselves just aren't as malleable in post-production as the DSLR's raw files will be. All right, so that's it for today. So if you have any comments or questions or feedback, let me know down in the comments below. I love hearing your comments and they really are helping me improve these videos for the future. And if you like this, if you got a lot out of it, please remember to like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel and it's helping us grow at a pretty fast pace, despite me not always posting on time. And if you wanted to get the Epson scanner or use the lens, I've got some affiliate links down in the description below. Those help keep the channel going. They give me a small commission on every sale, but they don't cost you anything. So if you like this content, using those affiliate links down below really does help us out. All right, thanks so much, and we'll catch you in the next one.